first of all it's great to be a screenwriter but it can be very frustrating when people take your stuff and twist it around and do things you didn't want to do with it and when you're the director it's easier to stay on top of that stuff. It took us about six years to put together all the financing for the movie and you know that sort of thing independent film can be a little grueling from that perspective but I love the directing process and the cast and crew was so good and so many of the people who worked on the movie are here a number of our cast members. Give it up for the cast and crew here in the audience. You know werewolf film is a very difficult thing to pull off and as you can see I mean some of it's great and some of it you know it's tougher to to make work but I I always felt that American Werewolf in London was the greatest werewolf film of all time. I think we got some fans of that. Just a remarkable film and you know written when John Landis was 19 years old and and just an incredible piece of work and I and I felt when we took this on that that was the definitive telling of the classic tale so you know kid gets bit he starts to change he starts to kill people and then he has to be hunted down and that's you know an amazing story but it's also kind of inherently depressing and I wanted to do something a little different and I thought back to my high school years which were here over in Mississauga and you're a Toronto boy right? Yeah I mean I lived all over the world but I spent most of my life growing up in Toronto and and this is my hometown and 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 in fact so that the makeout scene with Caitlin Leib and and Lucas at the beginning of the film is about 500 yards from my old high school and it's where I used to go to make up. This is basically a personal retelling. It's an autobiographical story, I mean it definitely is, because I, you know, when you're, when you hit 17 and you moved around a lot and you've been hassled a lot, you, you know, there's a point at which you snap and you just start to fight back and so the scenes of fighting football players and all that stuff, that's all true to life. Um, and and I thought, you know, if we could create a film that was about that period in your life um, and about that, that unformed rage and sex and violence and all that stuff that you're dealing with at that age, then, you know, in life your goal is not to destroy that, it's, uh, it's to learn to control it, learn to focus it, and, and learn to put it into more positive uh, areas. So. I thought, you know, when I had that idea, I thought that's something that speaks to me, and I think that's something that that hasn't really been done yet uh, with this uh, genre. Fantastic cast of yours, including Lucas Till, Jason Momoa, and of course Stephen McHaddy, another Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they I, really all all those people you just mentioned sought out the project. I mean, the script was sort of going around, and and I got a call from Lucas's agent. And then, and I thought, you know, he not only would he be amazing, but he's he's right at that point in his life where I wanted somebody who, you know, was a believable boy who could become a believable man, and and so that was pretty cool. And then once he was on board, the same agency called and said, "What about Jason Momoa for Connor?" And I was like, "Oh, shit, yeah, that could work." And he is awesome in that role. He's so good. I mean, like, because I knew from Game of Thrones that he was good. You know, I could, you could see the, like, the love in his eyes for the Khaleesi, and like, you know, he's really, a pretty, you know, for an intimidating guy, he's a, he's a pretty subtle actor, and 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 so, and in this one, I said, look, I don't need you to be screaming at people's faces or whatever. You're just naturally terrifying. So, you know, I want you. I don't want you to be the thug. I want you to be smart. And you know, and always watching. And he, so Jason went to a a wolf rescue to study with the wolves, and and they actually gave him a wolf. He's got a he's got this enormous timber wolf lives in his backyard. True story. And then he came up to me when we were in the barn. The barn scene was the first we shot, and it was so amazing to have those three guys, you know, sort of going toe to toe. And Jason comes up to me and he goes, "Okay, dude, I got it." So this is what I learned from the wolf thing. I see you, I see around you, and I see through you. And I was like, yeah, good, great. <laughs> do, do that. <laughs> that, that works. And then, and, then, um, and then, so we needed a Canadian to play uh, Tollerman, and um, 
his agent, who I've known, who was my agent when I, you know, like 20 years ago here in Canada, calls up and says, well, what about Steve McHattie? And I was like, yeah, let's do that, because he, I worked on the movie Watchmen, and he played Hollis Mason, and he's, I mean, just a phenomenal actor. I don't even understand how he does what he does, but I knew that he would, he would, you know, lend an enormous amount of gravitas to that part. But what I didn't realize was, you know, Stephen is literally half the size of Jason Momoa, and I had written the part to be, you know, he's very fearful of Connor, and then they got on set, and I was like, oh, Steve McHattie's not fearful of anything. And then to just to watch them go toe-to-toe, and there's a longer extended version of that scene. We had to cut it down for various reasons, but it was so glorious just watching them, you know, like Jason trying to intimidate Steven, and Steven just giving it right back, and it was really, really cool to watch. So, and then all the rest of my cast was, you know, was so good. We really, you know, found some great actors, like Casey Hudecki. So the girl who gets beat up at the truck stop is a friend of mine. We did a movie called Devil's Mile, which came out in August, and we were both in it. And then, but she's an incredible stunt woman. She's a great actress, but an incredible stunt woman, and I knew she could really take a punch and be adorable and deliver this amazing scene. And then Gail, you know, Melanie Scrifano, who plays Gail, the drunken sister, you know, I thought, maybe this is too far, and maybe it's too, like, people were coming in and reading for it, and it just wasn't working, and I was like, that's too goofy, it's just, it's not going to work. And then Melanie came in, and, you know, she did her thing, and she read her lines, and she, and then when we were finished, she got up and walked straight into the wall. And I was like, okay, yeah, great. So, so I have another film that I've written with a friend of mine, actually the guy who says he's going to party after he kills Caden and gets his throat cut, uh, he and I wrote a, a script um, called Winter, which we're, we're uh, talking about doing with Copperheart, uh, which are the Canadian producers on, uh, on the film. So hopefully another film here in, in Toronto soon. Everything was designed to go back from the face. So everything leads the eye back so that we could keep the face relatively clear and keep uh, the latex... Um, you know, glued to the muscle of the face so that when somebody has an emotional reaction, you see the actor coming through. Like the moment when uh, Lucas finds out that while Joe killed his parents, he just, his face falls and, and it just comes right through the makeup and it's very cool and you get the personality of the actor. So to accomplish that, um, we got Dave and Lou Elsie who uh, won the Academy Award for the movie Wolfman and, um, and like Lou is the foremost expert on animal fur in the world, which, if you didn't know there was such a thing, uh, join the club. Um, and then, you know, and they're just masters, and so I took these concepts to them and I said, I want them sleeker than, than usual, I want them more beautiful, like, like wolves are in nature, uh, not hairy, crazy monsters. And, um, and so they just did this phenomenal job, they sculpted these, these beautiful pieces of art, and and you know, painted them, and then all of that fur is real fur that's been plugged in hair by hair by a table of like 20 women in, in Sun Valley, in California. And um, every, so like the masks, each mask was like 60 grand, and every time you take it off, it's destroyed. So um, the scene where uh, Momoa is looking over the edge of the cliff, and then get, gets up and turns around, was the only thing we shot that night. So they put him in this makeup, it takes four hours. Uh, he came out at 3.30 in the morning, <laughs> shot for you know, two and a half minutes, and then we destroyed uh, that mask.